Hey now, Mike Shaman here, and I'm going to do a Fluent Forms tutorial for you. So, Fluent Forms is a form plugin for WordPress websites. I want to get into the tutorial right now. So, I've already installed the plugin. All right, and now I'm going to go to add a new form. One of the cool things about Fluent Forms is that you can actually select a pre made template that they already have loaded in here. Okay, so you can just hit create form and it's going to create this form in just a few seconds for you. So that is something really neat that Fluent Forms allows you to do. But for this tutorial purpose, we'll just be creating a form from scratch so you can see some of the things that you can do with Fluent Forms here. So we're just going to go to create blank form and now we come to this interface here and this is where you can easily drag and drop fields from here to here. Okay, so you can see it and drag and drop. So it has a name field email simple text mask input text here now look you're not going to use every single one of these on every form okay but if you're making a lot of websites you'll be using them all the time okay so one of the cool things is that you can just click the drop downs here and you can see all the fields they have here okay and just, like i say there's drag and drops okay so if you want to do a name field there and let's say you want to do an email so I'll move this one up there. And let's say you wanted to do a drop down. Maybe you have a list of some from and choose from. Let's put that right there. And now if we want to style this up a little bit, we can just go to this little pencil right here. Let's go to pencil. And it brings us over here to input customization. This is where we customize the field, the, the admin label. So if we just wanted this to be named, usually we just leave the admin label alone. Okay, but name fields. You can choose right here if you want it to be first name, last name, first. Okay, you can see that just change right here. So you just go first. All right, and the label will just change right there. So if you just want to be first name, okay. And then if you want to change that placeholder, so instead of it says first name, look right up here. It's going to say, it's going to say type name here, just for example purposes. All right, and you can see that uh, it changed right there. Max text length, you can do, um, if there's a limit to how long you want their first name to be, you don't want it to be over you know, 50 characters, you can do that. And then you can choose if this is gonna be required or not. So if you want that to be a required field, okay? And then if somebody doesn't fill it out, it will just hit uh, error message there. All right, you can go through the other label placements there, or you can go through the other labels there, and then label placements right here, you can choose if you want it to be the left, the right, if you want it to be hidden, whatever you want, you can choose that right here. And this is a really nice feature. I really like this a lot. Okay, now let's go to advanced options. So if you wanted to get a little more advanced and do attributes and um, classes, this is where you would do that. If you want to do conditional logic, you can do that right here. Conditional logic is if, so let's say maybe, uh, maybe you're doing a contest or something and you're only giving away to people named um, Heather, okay? So you'd say conditional logic, yes. Select, uh, maybe their email has to be at heather.com, okay? It must equal at uh, heather.com, okay? This is just an example, again. So if they, they had an email address there and it's not um, heather.com, this form will not show up. That's how you do conditional logic. That's just a quick little rundown. But let it be known that you can do conditional logic with Fluent Forms. All right, now let's get back to our input fields here. So that's a little bit about editing, okay? Now you can also do radio fields, time and dates. Now one of the cool things about the Fluent Forms that you can do as well is containers. Okay, now what this is, this will allow you to do multiple rows, okay? So you can just do two rows here. So you want the radio buttons there and you want the drop down over here. All right, or maybe you want a three column. Okay, you want a three column, so you do radio here, drop down here, and then the date and time right here. And you just trash these. And it'll confirm that you wanna make sure you delete them. Now when you're ready to uh, submit your form, you just hit, um, or when you're ready to save, you just hit save form, and it'll save your form there. If you put this short code right here, you see this code at the top, you can put that code on any website. You wanna make sure you get the complete code with the brackets. You can put that on any web page of yours, and this form will show up. Let's go ahead and see what the form looks like now. So let's go to preview and design. So now we're on the preview page, okay? And this is a little cool thing they have here that you can change up. If you wanna change up the style of your form, you can do that right here. This is a really neat feature that you can do with Fluent Forms, okay? And if you wanna do the advanced customization and go through all your settings here, you can go ahead and change that, okay? If you wanna change your background colors here. So this is a really nice, um, 
cool little features here that you can do with fluent forms and this is something that you're not going to get with all, any other form builders okay they don't have this stylization made this easy okay so if you're looking to stylize your forms this is probably going to be the form builder that you want to use you can also do black shadows okay and edit those and th there's just a bunch of neat features that you can do that you, and you're going to have to play around with it a little bit if you haven't used a form plugin before or you haven't used a, a builder plugin you're going to play around with it a little bit to get used to it and you're going to have to play around to see exactly what all of the options do. All right, so once you get it in a place you like it, just go ahead and do the save settings there and it'll save your settings for the style that you picked. Now, if we go back to the editor here, there's a few other things. I mean, there's a lot of cool things that you can do, but you know, some of the cool ones are file upload. If you wanted to make a file upload, upload a resume for an application maybe. Um, let's see here. If you want to add custom HTML, you can do that. So custom HTML, like, um, I don't know, you want to, to add some code in there for whatever, you want to track something. All right, now if you want to, to add a product, you can do that as well. So if you go over here to this um, payment field, all right, and you go to edit. So you can place the label here, of course, we know the label field already. And then you can, um, choose your amount right here now you will have to connect this to your stripe account to your paypal account or to whatever account um, that you will be using as a payment gateway so you can choose if it's required or not okay and then you can choose your advanced options down here as well all right so you got your payment there and then you might want to have a payment method okay so that's your payment method and you can see that pay paypal i have my paypal address entered in i don't have my stripe set up but you can do pay with uh, paypal and if you had your stripe set up it would say stripe right here okay and that's again once you once you install the stripe it'll say it right here pay with stripe and then uh, the amount so see if you have multiple items you can do the amount here and then item quantity okay if you go in here and you switch it you can uh, exchange quantity required yes or no and um, you just got a custom payment amount and you can map this to this item all right if you wanted to do that as like an upsell or something like that Okay, and then there's a bunch of advanced options in there as well. And you probably want to have a payment summary on there. If you're doing a product, what the payment summary does is um, it basically shows them what, you know, they bought. Uh, so it'll be like, okay, you bought this, this, this. It's, it's like their, you know, receipt. All right, and then, you know, custom payment amount. We already went over that. Item quantity, payment method field. Let's go, just go to save form. All right, now let's go to preview form and refresh. All right, and there it is. Okay, you can see the payment receipt. That's the payment summary right there. Very nice, very professional. Now, you'd agree if you're you were making a form like this for your client and they saw something like this, they would probably like it very much. So it's a very nice form maker. Go back into the editor. All right, and we can go to settings and integrations here. And this is where you want to configure where your form is going. Okay, this is where you where you can configure that. So once I hit submit on this form, where do they go? Okay, do you want to send them to a thank you message? All right, do you want to send them to a page within your website already? Or do you want to send them to an external URL or a different website? Okay, that's where you would do this. So you select which one you want to do there. Okay, if you want to do a redirection message, you can do that or a same page message. You do that right there. All right, again, you can choose the form layout here. So if you want the labels on the top, bottom, left or right, okay, you can go through all this. If you want to limit the entry amounts, okay, you can do that right here. If you only want to be able to limit to five people, you can do that. You can do a bunch of other things. You can add extra CSS classes right here. Okay, now let's go to payment settings. Payment settings where you're choosing the dollar and then you can choose between products and services or donations. All right, and then you can choose the customer email settings there. Let's go to email notifications. So the email notifications, they're gonna send you notifications whenever somebody fills out the form. So you just wanna to go to enable that. And then what you wanna do is you can just go over here and click on the edit button there. And then you, you see the name of it right here. So it's gonna be admin notification. And it's gonna to send to the admin email. And you can put whatever email address you want right here. And then it's gonna be a submission form and it's gonna say the name. Okay, and it's gonna say new submission form in your email, and this is what's gonna be. So that's where you configure whatever email address you want to go to. Okay, you wanna send it to the your email address or a different person's email address, so that's where you would do that. Or you can do other confirmations right here. Landing page, if you wanted to create, they call it a distraction-free landing page, so it's basically like they put it, uh, they just put like a blank page template with the form, and you just do that, and do your title and description there, and you can select your options. 
All right, the custom CSS and JavaScript, if you know how to do that, then go ahead. This is where you put your custom CSS and JavaScript at. Okay, and then your other integrations are right here. If you wanna add an integration, you just go to add integration and it pops down and you can add your integrations that way. All right, so that's where you would add integrations. And then if you want the entries, so like I said before, every time you the entries are submitted, the entries save to the back end of the website and that'd be right here, okay? This is where the entries would be saved. They have a name, email, and what their um, statuses were for all these options. And this is where we'd find that, okay? So that's basically Fluent Forms and my Fluent Forms tutorial. Like I said, there's a lot of options you can do. And one of the things that makes this Fluent Forms WordPress plugin so powerful is the, when you go to add a new form, it, and you can choose from any of these templates. This is a really powerful thing, and I really like this Fluent Forms plugin. So if you want to get Fluent Forms, go ahead and check in the link below. Guys, go ahead and subscribe and, and like this video so I can bring you more Fluent Form tutorials and other WordPress plugin tutorials as well. All right, so go ahead and check out my other tutorials and I'll see y'all in the next video.